How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to focus on the Atlantic hurricane season and our next potential tropical cyclone that could develop somewhere between the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico into later this week and into early next week. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. So let's begin by taking a look at the GFS model right now so now we're approaching that time where slowly but surely we're gonna shift our focus more into the hurricane season because of course hurricane season is right around the corner but as you know over the past several hurricane seasons we've had we have had a, a multitude of tropical cyclones develop well before the official start of the hurricane season which is june 1st and this might be another one of those hurricane seasons because if i were to show you what the gfs model is state is forecasting at this time it's forecasting some sort of vorticity to form just off the central american coastline and we could see that vorticity move into the gulf of mexico and we could see our next tropical cyclone out of this vorticity so how this will develop will really will really determine um will really be determined by how strong this gyre is because this tropical cyclone if it were to develop will initially start out as a gyre which is typical during the early hurricane season we typically do see a multitude of tropical cyclones that form in the early parts of the hurricane season such, such as may june and july develop off of a gyre that's the um that's developing right around the central american area and this will be no different because if i were to show you guys the gfs model as we were to move forward you're gonna see that rule just off the um central american coast we're gonna see an influx of moisture begin to move northward as a result of this lower this strong bermuda ridge that's bringing that moisture further northward and as it does so it, there could be an area where the wind shear will be light enough and of course sea surf temperatures at this point are warm enough to where we could see a little bit of development and a center and a center circulation deepening as this moves further northward but there's still a lot of questions remain and you see that this slow pressure system or center circulation develops as early as thursday may 19th so this could begin to really deepen into a more formidable low pressure system by later this week so that's only something to keep in mind and if i were to continue to move forward there might be some land interaction associated with this low pressure system as it moves northward which could be a big hindering factor when it comes to this low pressure system developing as it moves northward but there are other factors that as well because the wind shear although i did say that the wind shear will likely be light lighter than average there's still that possibility that the wind shear might be too strong let me show you guys the how the upper level winds look like um right around the saturday time frame and we do see that small area where the wind shear is lighter than average as a result of an upper level high that's developing just aloft above this um gyre so we do see an area where the wind shear is um is weak enough to where maybe a low pressure system could deepen under these conditions however there's still questions that remain regarding this upper level low because of course the upper level i mean the upper level high because of course the upper level high depending on its location could maybe shift a little bit westward which would force more of those stronger upper level winds um, to move over this low pressure system, hindering its development. However, there's also a possibility that this upper level high does stay over the low pressure system just enough to where the wind shear will be relatively light as this gyre moves northward. And that's currently what the GFS model is forecasting because if I were to show you guys um, how much the GFS model wants to strengthen this low pressure system if I were to continue to move forward. You see that it does develop it just off the Yucatan Peninsula, just off the Guatemalan coast, and if I were to continue to move forward, it does deepen quite a bit as early as next week, where by the 180 hour mark, we see a 992 millibar low pressure system which is definitely equivalent to a tropical storm at this point as we could see a tropical storm i'd say potentially as early as maybe sunday or monday if everything goes right if the wind shear is as light 
as a GFS model is forecasting at this time. And there are other factors as well, because we also need to pay close attention to the relative humidity or the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, because of course, if there's too much dry air around the center of circulation, then the air will be too stable to force a lot of that water vapor and the air molecules to be um, to be very buoyant and to rise up into the atmosphere, which creates latent heat. And as a result, that's what that enhances the wind speed of a tropical cyclone. And that deepens the low pressure system when there's, uh, when there's a high amount of moisture. When there isn't, that pretty much prevents any sort of convection from occurring. And if I were to show you guys, you see that it's going to be in sort of a bubble of moisture for the most part um, associated with this gyre, of course. But... If we were to look further westward, look at the amount of dry air pretty much over the Gulf of Mexico at this time. And this could maybe be one of the hindering factors, um, this hurricane that we, um, th the Atlantic might need to deal with this hurricane season. Because, um, like I've been showing you in my previous videos, the west coast of the United States has been a lot drier than average. So, we're bound to experience much more drier than average air in this region and since we're seeing a pattern where we're seeing a multitude of troughs move through the northern united states at this time it's creating stronger than usual winds because of course that pressure gradient of this ridge over the drought chicken area and the troughs that are moving through is creating just enough of a strong wind to steer a lot of the dry air further eastward and that could be a limiting factor when it comes to the soil pressure system um, as this moves northward because you see that once this reaches the Yucatan Peninsula there is a, a decent amount of dry air shearing the western part of this storm so there's still questions remaining how much dry air there will be um, just be aware that it exists um, and it could be a hindering factor but we need to wait and see just how the magnitude of dry air that will be to really determine how strong the soil pressure system will be. But if I were to continue to move forward even beyond the seven day mark, which I typically don't like to do because it becomes extremely uncertain beyond the seven day mark. But look at how fast the soil pressure system deepens. It's already at 900. 85 millibars which almost could be considered a hurricane so if you're in the yucatan peninsula this is definitely something you want to be concerned about i'm not saying at all or implying at all that a hurricane will make landfall that's definitely not the case but even if this doesn't develop into necessarily a tropical storm you don't need this to be a tropical storm or hurricane to cause some um to bring some impacts to you guys because of course flooding could still be a big issue and if i were to continue move forward you see that it deepens quite a lot for a tropical cyclone that's not even in the official part of the hurricane season but i'm going way far out with this i'd say anywhere past the Yucatan peninsula it's pretty much a guess at this point what's going to happen but it's suddenly something to at least be aware of still high uncertainty but the gfs model since it's been but since it's really been persistent on developing some sort of tropical cyclone with it, there could be some truth to it, especially since the European model is also forecasting an influx of moisture to move through um through just off the um just off the coast um the Central American coast, and we could see just a little bit of vorticity associated with this gyre as it moves northward and that definitely raises a possibility that there could be maybe be tropical cyclone development as early as late this week so that's only something to keep in mind you see that we're going to see a little bit of moisture move up the move up the central american coast and it's still on um, the european model is still a lot less lenient on developing um really anything but it's at least bringing a little bit of vorticity like I'm going to show you right now. If I were to show you guys a vorticity forecast, um, you see that it, um, taking a look right now, there's no vorticity just off the Central American coast, but continuing to move forward, we do see just a tiny bit of vorticity, which already does enhance the risk of maybe some sort of tropical cyclone or low pressure, some deepening just off the Central American coast. So definitely something to keep in mind. A lot of questions remain. What will really determine whether this tropical cyclone develops or not is how much land interaction this slow pressure system will deal with because if it moves a little bit further inward or landward uh, um 
then we're less likely to see, of course, tropical cyclone development because the, the low pressure system or the trough needs that requires that warm water to produce latent heat for convection to occur. If it's over land, it can't really do that. And also, of course, the friction of the mount, the mountainous terrain of Central America would definitely um, destroy this slow pressure system apart and really, um, and really prevent the energy from being focused um, right around the center of circulation with all that friction if this low pressure system to, to, were to move more inland but if it's a little bit more off the coast then there's going to be far less friction it's going to be over the warm waters of the caribbean which will deepen the low pressure system and enhance the convection as a result of the latent heat of, of absorbing that latent heat that the warm ocean water produces and as well as the amount of lift there will be in the atmosphere as a result of the warmer than average sea surf temperatures and um but the other thing like i said will be the dry air that will be another big question because like i said we're sort of seeing a pattern where the this dry air over the drought stricken regions of the united states is moving towards the gulf of mexico as a result of this of a pressure gradient between this ridge over the drought stricken area and the troughs moving through the northern united states and that's only going to be another fact when we need to determine how much dry air there will be in the gulf of mexico to really determine is so pressure some will deepen the wind shear is also another factor we're going to need to pay close attention to while currently the gfs model and even the european model are expecting lighter than usual wind shear it isn't 100 percent it might not be 100% accurate, especially when we're talking about a forecast right around the five day mark. We do see that there will be an upper level low or just off the Central American coast, which could allow for tropical cyclone development, but we need to wait and see if this it will be 100% accurate because forecasting something around three to five days out, especially something as uncertain as wind shear is a little bit tricky. So we're definitely gonna need to pay close attention to all those factors to really determine if this tropical cyclone will form. But based on what the GFS model is stating and the European model at this point, it's at least something to be aware of at this point. This isn't just some random guess or um, from either of the computer models because both of them are now at least taking some sort of vorticity just off the Central American coast. So we're definitely gonna need to be watching this over the next several days to see if we could get another year where a tropical storm does develop before the official start of the hurricane season. So we are definitely gonna pay close attention to that over the next several days but in terms of impacts along central america whether this develops into tropical storm alex hurricane alex or not you still need to pay attention to it um heavy rain along central america so make sure to keep that in mind um in case of flooding along the coast so um, if I were to show you guys the current wind shear map at this time, you see that pretty much the entirety of the Atlantic is experiencing wind shear that's far too strong for any sort of tropical cyclone development. But look just to the southwest, I mean the southeast of this area of convection right here. We do see that light, we do see lighter than average wind shear, and I expect that to move northwestward as um along with this upper level ridge, which will induce a, a nice environment for potentially tropical storm Alex to form. So that's only something to keep in mind. And another thing I want to show you guys is the MJO forecast, which pretty much forecasts whether or not there will be more lift in the atmosphere or where whether or not conditions will be more favorable for tropical cyclone development or less favorable for tropical cyclone development so pretty much a negative mjo represents that there's going to be there um there's a little bit more lift in the atmosphere in that specific region as well as a more favorable chance of tropical cyclone development while those shaded in the yellows and oranges or in the positive mjo pattern that's where tropical cyclone development is less likely and the air is a little bit more unstable um, so if i were to show you guys the mjo forecast for today next week and into two weeks from now you see that we're under a, the atlantic is under a negative mjo pattern which does favor um tropical cyclone development over the next week which would enhance the chance that um, we could see tropical cyclone development just off the co um, the Central American coast. So that's only something to keep in mind. We're in a positive 
MJO pattern and along with more than average T-surf temperatures, we could see an enhanced risk of charcoal cycle development associated with that chaff that I've um, I was just mentioning. So another thing we need to take a look at is a five-day graphical tropical weather outlook and no new tropical cyclones are currently expected during the next five days, but um, I do expect this to change um, in the near future because the four because the forecasts I've been showing you go beyond the five-day mark when the GFS model does forecast this to, to develop into a tropical storm and and if this and if the european model were to forecast a tropical storm it would again happen beyond the five day mark so while you don't necessarily see anything on the five day graphical tropical weather outlook um as of right now i wouldn't be surprised if that changes over the next several days once we do get a little bit more certainty that there could maybe be tropical cyclone development just off the central american coast um late next um late this week and so early next week so that's something something to keep in mind um and in terms of um if this will be a future united states threat um because that's probably your biggest question so it's still far too early to really tell but the fact that we're seeing a strong ridge build over bermuda and pretty much a strong steering flow that's going to steer this moisture further northward there could be a higher possibility that we'll at least maybe see some moisture reach the united states even if this doesn't develop into a uh, tropical storm alex or hurricane alex in the gulf of mexico so but still a ton of uncertainty we just need to wait and see how the forecast unfolds over the next several days and taking a look at sea surf temperatures you see that temperature sea surf temperatures just off the uh, central american coast are more than warm enough um, than average um, for tropical cyclones of, to develop. Now, it isn't so much above average. The uh, upper ocean heat content is still pretty low this time of the year because, of course, we're still in the month of May. So that might, so that definitely would hinder it just a bit because if if we were to place the same conditions um, that it's under right now in let's say in August or September with August and September like sea surf temperatures and the chance would definitely be higher that this develops as a result of the higher um, the, the higher upper ocean heat content and the higher amount of latent heat this could absorb but um, there's still a possible there's still more than enough of a possibility that this does develop with the right condition so that's only something to keep in mind and the sea surf temperatures again are warmer than average just off the um the central american coast so that should induce more lift in the atmosphere overall and here's my forecast of where you should be um where the area of future concern should be or, or pretty much where this slow pressure system could develop and i'm expecting it to develop anywhere probably between Costa Rica and as far north as the mid portion of the Gulf of Mexico. This is an area where you need to be concerned of tropical cyclone development over, I'd say, the next week and a half. So that's something, something to pay close attention to um, pretty much all throughout the Gulf Coast as well as um, the Yucatan Peninsula, the Central American coastline as well. You guys need to pay close attention to this over the next several days but um still too early to really narrow down what's gonna happen with this storm but it's at least something to be aware of um for a lot of for those um in the area of future concern but yeah guys um i'll continue to update you guys on this i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content and i hope you guys all have a great day